Hi, I'm Aura, and I'm the host of Collective Mind, but Jade and Natalie are both pretty close, so I put um, them, like, under my picture and stuff to show that they're co-conscious, basically. And I'm going to try to make at least my section of a video about what it was like for me learning about our system. And this video is going to be from multiple perspectives, at least two other perspectives of other than mine, of <laughs> other alters in our system directly talking about what it was like for them and what their perspective was on it and if that has changed since and things like that. And some of us might also reference some other perspectives that some of the rest of the system had, either specifically naming names of people who are comfortable sharing that but didn't want to actually film something, or just generally saying that, like, and a bunch of other people felt this way type things. I have talked about this before from my perspective, but it was a video from a long, long time ago. It was my original Meet the Alters video when I hadn't changed my name yet, and I was wrong about several things about myself. And then when I did my updated video, I didn't really talk again about my perspective of learning about the system because I thought that a lot of the things I said were still applicable, basically. So I'm going to talk about some of those things again and if my perspective has changed some and give kind of the general background information of like when it happened and what was going on. So it was actually during COVID lockdown. We were originally furloughed from the full-time job that we had at the time and in lockdown. So we suddenly had much, much, much more free time than we were used to. And some videos about DID started coming up on our YouTube recommendations for some reason, probably because we've had like an interest in psychology for a long time and if we've watched a lot of psychology related videos before. And I ended up watching some of them because they looked interesting and I was starting to feel called out basically by some of the details in some of those videos. And this lasted at least a few days, but I think longer, where I wasn't really thinking seriously about the idea that I might actually be part of a system myself, that I might have DID myself, but I was just... I thought I was just, like, getting really interested in and, like, obsessed with the idea about it, like, from a psychology perspective, which has happened before, where I was just, like, really interested in whatever psychology-related thing I just learned about, and I, like, dug into it a lot. And I thought at first that that's what was happening, that I was just really interested, and... <laughs> that it wasn't, like, anything beyond that. And I know now that it wasn't just me who was really interested in it, because most, if not all of us, didn't know. Like, even those of us who knew about the system before then didn't know much, if anything, about, like, the psychology side of it, what it was called and any of the like ideas within the community about things that can help with healing and with communication and we we didn't have anything before then that was essentially validating the experience of even the alters who knew about the system. So 
there were a lot of other alters who were really interested in the videos too because they like recognized it as what was happening with us and other specific details in it that were validating or that were interesting things that they might want to try to deal with whatever situation was going on in our system and so on. But I eventually had like a breakthrough moment where I started worrying essentially that I related to like too much of what I was seeing in those videos and I decided to get out my bullet journal and just make a list of the things that I was relating to and the point of the list, the reason I did that, was to prove to myself that it wasn't as many things as I was worrying that it was. Like, I wanted to get the list in front of me so I could look at it and be like, see, that's only five things or whatever, and four of them could easily be explained by other things I'm already diagnosed with. And... I ended up writing like several back-to-back -back pages in one sitting in that bullet journal. And it started out with more general things that could be more easily explained. And then like by the third page, I suddenly remembered that I don't remember basically my entire childhood, <laughs> which was a pretty big thing. And then the connection of like some of the things that I had done in therapy already <sighs> because my my therapist at the time for a while had done a little bit of like internal family systems type therapy and I like suddenly realized that I was, like, building communication with other alters when I was doing that. Like, I was thinking about how they, like, felt about different things or how they would react to different things or, like, why was these, why were these particular things bothering them specifically and how could I help them and like I I ended up with several pages of things that felt like evidence essentially that I was part of a system and the fact that I wrote it out made it a lot harder for Michael at the time and our main gatekeeper at the time to take those memories from me because I two main things I had I had it on paper so they would have had to like get rid of that somehow and then take away my memory of watching them get rid of it so like that would have been pretty obvious because I'm always either fronting or co-conscious, I would have had to watch someone, like, get rid of everything that I just did, and that would have been very suspicious. But because on top of that, I was making a lot of connections with memories I already had, and that's something, at least in our system, that makes it much, much harder for gatekeepers to take memories away is once you have essentially integrated those memories with memories you already have that you're supposed to have. So once I had made all of those connections, it made it way messier and much, much harder to try to like separate them out again and take away the memories they didn't want me to have. And I made that list like in the middle of the night the day before a therapy appointment and I immediately talked to my therapist about it 
that next day. So that made it even harder because obviously our gatekeepers can't take memories away from people outside of our system. So <laughs> if he ever like brought it up again to us after, if they managed to take memories from me, he would have just been reminding me of it. So because I was making all those connections, it felt like things were clicking into place like it connected a lot of things that seemed separate before it was a lot of things explained by one thing instead of a bunch of separate things because we had i had thought that some of those things had to do with other things i was already diagnosed with and i essentially like tried to explain away the symptoms that I didn't have total denial or amnesia about with like the explanations I already had essentially and that was encouraged by other alters especially Michael at the time who were trying to keep the secret and I was really excited and I was eager for a lot more information I wanted to know everything right away and I pushed for some like access and information without really meaning to and without definitely without realizing what the consequences might be especially because it took me a while to realize that there wouldn't just be consequences for me there would be consequences for the other members of the system too because it was a transition process for me to like really start realizing and understanding that they were separate people who were going to react differently than I would and who knew a lot of things that I didn't know and who like might not consent to share things with me for all kinds of reasons and that sharing some of those things with me might hurt them even if it didn't hurt me but i also massively underestimated how much learning some of those things could hurt me and if i could go back and tell myself then three years ago a little more than that i guess wow <laughs> if i could go back and tell myself then, like, if I could tell myself anything, I would say, like, stop pushing for more information. And I don't know if it would make a difference. I don't know if I would have believed myself. <laughs> but I also wanted more help as host. Once I realized that I could get help, and the, the irony of the situation was the system changes that happened shortly after and like within a longer, little bit longer span of time after me finding out about the system originally, those system changes actually gave me less help as host for a while because Joseph had been a co-host and then he split because of stuff that was going on after I found out and he wasn't co-host anymore neither of neither or none I'm not positive actually how many alters split from Joseph but none of them are co-hosts and old Natalie was somewhat of a co-host helped a lot with host related things and she eventually fused with michael into Jaden, and Jaden couldn't really do any of those things that old natalie used to do the natalie that you've seen on the channel was dormant still at the time i didn't know about her yet uh liz was also dormant at the time and wasn't even a co-host yet at the time like 
she woke up and then there was a period of time before she even became a co-host. And Anna was even busier than she had been with her jobs that were inside than she had been before. And then like our normal because of inner world conflict things that were going on. So she was helping a lot less with anything remotely host related, anything in the front, basically. So that was stressful and it was part of what made us much less functional pretty soon after I found out because I had so much less help in the front and I knew so much more so it was harder for me to do even the things that had been my responsibility or partly my responsibility it was harder for me to do those same things I was age sliding more easily not as much anymore necessarily but a lot a lot at first like even fairly minor stress was making me slide for a while so I wasn't like functioning well enough to do like to be able to go back to work or anything like that and we we tried very briefly and the combination of like we were starting to get some of the more intense early pot symptoms that we had but on top of that I was much less functional and I had much much less help so that is pretty much the overview of my perspective the next section is going to be Jaden talking about Michael's perspective at the time. As far as I know, old Natalie didn't really have um, much of an opinion on it, but Michael had a lot. For any of you who have seen our um, recent system update that talked somewhat about Jaden, this next section of the video was something that Jaden filmed many weeks ago before that started. So we don't have any updates yet, any changes about what's going on with Jaden. So I wanted to make sure to clarify that uh, this video isn't isn't like functioning as an update to that. It's not saying, hey, everything's fine. Here, look, Jaden just made a video. It's from before that happened. So yeah, this next section is going to be from Jaden that they filmed a while ago. And then it'll be Jade after that, I'm pretty sure. So We'll hand it over to them. Hi, I'm Jaden. I don't expect that this will be the first clip of this video, but I am the first one to film a clip for this video, but I'm not going to film a whole intro for that reason, because I expect Aura's clip will be first. But I'm going to be talking about my perspective as Michael before I fused about Aura finding out about the system and how that all went down. In terms of people who were actively involved, especially who Aura knew about, I was the major person who was totally against her finding out about the system or anybody who didn't already know finding, about, finding out about the system. Aura was not the only person in our system who did not know they were a part of a system, and we still have alters who don't. The ones who don't currently vast majority of them have very, very little to no access to the front, are a part of subsystems, or are otherwise deeply inside, and 
we take it case by case for how overwhelming we think it would be for them and whether or not they would be able to handle that. We've had a few, this isn't particularly relevant, but we've had a few try to start finding out about the system and become just completely and totally overwhelmed and not be able to handle it or process it at all and immediately go inside and either have amnesia about it pretty much immediately after that or split or go dormant or whatever, like just not be able to process that information. So I didn't know if anything like that would happen to Aura or anybody else involved because it would be, I knew it would be destabilizing. That was one of the things that was like a rational concern of mine as Michael was that it would be destabilizing. <laughs> I thought it would be unnecessarily destabilizing and that there was no point to destabilize our system like that. But that was also partly rooted in just generally not liking change. If things were working currently, why would we risk changing something like that, especially something that big? And I also the level of control that I had was very important to me. And it was important to me that I was right. I was certain that I was right about those things. I was certain that my level of control and involvement was absolutely necessary for us to be functioning at all, never mind as well as we were at the time. Because this was just before all of our functioning was about to start breaking down fairly suddenly. I was right about that. It wasn't for the exact reasons that I expected, and I caused some of them, but I was right that that happened shortly after. I couldn't have predicted the physical stuff, but <laughs> it wasn't just physical stuff. But I was also... I was also justifying a lot of the persecutory things that I was doing at the time and had done over the years. And the reasoning behind a lot of those things that I was doing was about, like, forcefully maintaining that secrecy and that amnesia in the case of Aura and other alters who didn't know because it wasn't safe. And so if, like, when people were starting to argue with me that it was safe, if that were true, that would mean that all of the things that I was doing that hurt people were not justified, and that was something I couldn't accept. I didn't like hurting people. It wasn't fun. I was certain that it was necessary, and that it wasn't possible for me to cause as much pain as I was preventing. <laughs> I was absolutely certain that whatever was going to happen if I didn't do those things was, like, inherently, definitionally much, much, much worse than anything I could do. And it seemed like an unnecessary risk. Why did Aura need to know? She could function just fine as a host without knowing about the system arguably better than she could if she was worrying about stuff that didn't have anything to do with her inside or knew about trauma that was stressing her out, and I was right about that. She has a harder time being host now. And it's still hard for me, essentially, to think of it as a consent issue, because she could not have informed consent about this decision either way. Because if we tried to ask her if she wanted to know, that was telling her. So, we couldn't ask her if she wanted to know without telling her, and once we told her, there was no taking that back, really. At least the way it happened, she connected too many dots too fast, and we couldn't take the memories away. I was somewhat in denial about how well we were functioning. I thought we were functioning better than we were, but I also thought that we could maintain that level of functioning indefinitely, no matter how hard it was, and that's not true. It certainly wasn't for us, and it's generally not. Burnout is a thing, and people can't 
generally mask that long that consistently and force themselves to be able to handle doing things that they shouldn't actually be able to handle like that for that long. And trying to do it for that long caused probably lifelong problems. It almost certainly, from conversations we've had with our doctors and research we've done, it almost certainly contributed to our POTS diagnosis, to like triggering that of us pushing through those levels of physical and otherwise stress for that long because dealing with like the stress hormones and everything going through our body all the time basically is one of the things that um research is starting to show might be a contributing factor for POTS but it also it caused a lot of problems within our system and a lot of things fell apart pretty much all at once because we couldn't continue to handle doing that. The biggest reason essentially that I had against Aura finding out was that I considered her finding out to be a safety risk and the only benefit potentially to have to do with like feelings and comfort, which I can't prioritize above a safety risk. I didn't trust Aura to handle the information in a safe way. I didn't know if she found out trauma information, if she would try to contact people involved to find out like if it really happened or get their side of the story or if she would try to do anything like that. I didn't know if she would accidentally or on purpose start just triggering people all the time if she would just like not understand how big of a deal that was and just decide that she wanted to know like some random trauma holder's favorite color and would negatively trigger them to the front and cause a flashback to try to ask them that like i didn't know i also didn't know if she would listen to me and follow my laundry list of strict rules if she found out because she wouldn't be used to doing that in the same way as a lot of other people already were. Starting in a situation where I still think it was necessary and a lot of other people in our system do agree with me that at least a lot of it with the information that we had and the things that were going on at the time, a lot of the things that I was doing were originally necessary as far as we can tell. And some of it I might have gone further with it than was called for. But a lot of the people who were used to dealing with me and my list of rules knew me first as a protector, essentially, as a harsh and strict protector who, like, got us through a lot of stuff. <laughs> but I thought it was very possible that if Aura found out about some of the things that I was doing and didn't have that same kind of a history with me of being used to me doing those things and coming originally at least from a place of them being called for and necessary responses to the situations that we were in, I thought it was very possible that she would just like defy anything and everything that I was doing and that did also turn out to be partially true, but it didn't have the catastrophic consequences that I predicted. So, it turned out I stopped doing a lot of those things, and uh, none of the world-ending things occurred. So, at least yet. <laughs> I pushed back very, very hard against her finding out about the system, and then against any of the suggestions of telling anybody else. I push back against joining Discord, against watching more YouTube videos about DID, against talking with our partner system, and every additional step of that, pretty much. First time they came to visit, when they moved in, all that stuff. I thought it was going to put us in 
horrific danger and that I was the only one who could see it. Or at least one of the main ones who could see it. I wasn't the only one who felt that way. And there are people in our system who still feel that way. And some of the bad things that I predicted did happen, like I said. It destabilized our system a lot. It disrupted a lot of things. Aura finding out about some trauma information was really, really hard on her. And she cannot host as well as before. Joseph splitting was a really big disruption to our system because he was a co-host. And a protector. Which suddenly put a lot more pressure on Aura to be hosting pretty much by herself. Because Liz and current Natalie were not um, around yet for various reasons. Liz wasn't an adult yet, and I think might have been dormant still at the time, and uh, current Natalie was definitely dormant at the time. And old Natalie uh, fused with Michael to become me, because she had also been involved in, like, day-to-day host-related things. And I had been, I as Michael, had been very, very involved in day-to-day everything. I, like, micromanaged all of it. (laughs) So yeah, those were some of the reasons that I felt and reacted that way. I escalated my responses a lot when people weren't listening to me. But it ended up leading up to, like, forcing me to face the reality that when I stopped doing those things, it wasn't like the level of disaster that I was expecting. We weren't immediately in life-threatening danger. And too many people were able to step up way, way more than I expected and fill in a lot of the things that I had been doing, which ended up contributing to my fusion because I was having like a major identity crisis because felt like nothing that I had believed so strongly that I was so sure about was actually true. It was really destabilizing for me, which is part of why I ended up fusing. And then after that fusion was able to like continue to work through some of that and now I'm not a persecutor anymore. So so I guess that's my section of this. Yeah, I'll leave the rest of it to whenever Aura gets around to filming her part, which you will have probably already seen in this video. And Jade is the other one who I'm pretty sure is going to film a piece, and I don't know if anyone else is going to, but yeah. I'll leave them to finish the rest of the video later. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try to get the switch on camera, because I'm pretty sure Jade is going to try to switch right now. Uh... Do you want me to play anything? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh Yeah, I think I'm Good, once I change this. So I am filming this right after Aura did hers. Ooh, I'm not quite all the way here, but I'm gonna try to push through this anyway because I want to get it done. I fought Michael a lot on whether or not Aura should know about the system, and this was, this was earlier versions of me, so this, unless I specify, I'm talking collectively about Old Jade, Primal, and Mama Bear, and I'm just gonna say I, because I'm all three of those people, but this was before any of those fusions, so just 
to keep that in mind. And if anything was like a specific perspective from one or a couple of them, then I'll try to remember to specify. So I fought Michael about it. I didn't necessarily trust Aura about it. It was, it was almost closer to underestimating her, like she couldn't really cause any problems, which I was wrong about, but I wasn't worried about things that she could do, really. That was partly because I didn't expect to end up telling her as much as I did, because she learned a lot from me telling other people, especially Primal Pack, things that I wouldn't have otherwise shared with her, but that I couldn't share with anyone externally without her watching, so I would have been a lot more worried about what she might do that early on if I had known I was going to share so much information with her. But I was really sick of hiding who I was. I planned to continue hiding trauma information, and I didn't continue hiding all of it. But I didn't want to hide who I was. I wanted, I wanted trusted people to actually know me as myself and not think that I was somebody else, and I wanted credit for things that I did and all of that. I also didn't expect to share the fact that we were a system with anyone outside of the system, so I wasn't thinking of that as the same thing. I wasn't thinking of it as we were also going to come out as a system to any of our family or our therapist or anybody online or anything. I became on board with that later, and I was very involved with <laughs> deciding what information we were comfortable sharing and what we weren't in those different contexts. I guess I did know by that point that talking about it in therapy at least somewhat was going to happen functionally because Aura already had. But before then, I already disagreed with Michael about like whether or not it was okay to tell Aura. That mattered a lot because I was also one of very, very few alters who could get around Michael and hold the front against him. So he couldn't force me not to do things as easily as he could most other people because he could just force his way into the front if they were about to do something he wasn't okay with, which was part of his job. It was a huge part of his job at the time. He was functionally primary protector, and he was partly a gatekeeper to an extent. He was... I would consider him to have been a gatekeeper in the sense that he was very involved in handling, like, switches in the front. He orchestrated a lot of those. He would force himself or other specific alters into the front. He would tell people to trigger specific alters into the front, depending on the situation. But he also was the most involved in gatekeeping what information we shared outside of the system and what information was shared with Aura. So he wasn't really involved in like memory gatekeeping, as far as I know, but like physically gatekeeping the front and then gatekeeping what information we shared outside of the system. So the fact that I could get past him and then stay past him in the front, even if he didn't want me to, at least sometimes under certain circumstances, meant that I could actually like go around him and do what I wanted, even if he was against it. And I did do that. I I used information Aura had already noticed and figured out on her own, like related to some of our triggers and things like that, which I'm not going to share details of, to introduce myself to her and at least part of my 
role. The fact that I connected it to things that she already knew also made it so gatekeepers couldn't take that memory back from her, which was also an important detail of that. I couldn't have done that as effectively if she didn't already know some of the information that she did at that point. The ways that I could defy Michael like that were also like huge contributing factors to other other executives at the time functionally supporting me becoming primary external protector instead of Michael. But that was that was a huge struggle for me because I didn't have Michael's level of access or awareness to a lot of things. And I didn't even know how much of a difference there was still by that point between my level of access and awareness and Michael's. Because it used to be a much, much bigger difference. I had basically no internal access and awareness like in childhood and Michael had been building his like since childhood so I couldn't do everything he had been doing and I didn't even know everything he had been doing we were also having a civil war in our inner world about the fact that I was becoming primary external protector and that we were like functionally overthrowing Michael. And a lot of system stuff was restructuring to like work around the changes that were happening, including new splits and fusions and uh, alters going dormant and a lot of alters waking up from dormancy. A lot, a lot of alters over a span of a few months or something like that were waking up from dormancy because it was suddenly safer and allowed to be more open and be themselves. As primal at the time, I was primary protector of my subsystem, and I chose to keep the subsystem a secret from Jade at the time until later after we were a lot closer with Primal Pack, which was a big factor in other subsystems not being discussed, including Aura's subsystem, because most of the secrecy surrounding that was because of my subsystem. There were other perspectives generally. There were a lot of other alters who agreed with me that they didn't want to have to hide anymore, that they wanted to be able to have their own interests and hobbies and things when they were fronting and not have to pretend to be anyone they weren't. But we also have a lot of alters who don't like change, and it was a lot of change all at once. And a lot of us didn't trust Aura for a while. A lot of us still don't, to be fair, but especially at first, because we hadn't, we didn't have any way of knowing what she would do with that kind of information because we had never given her any of that information before. So there were a lot of people who were worried that she would be way too open with any information that we shared, that she wouldn't respect consent or boundaries, or that she would be really controlling in some ways, like that she would try to fight alters from doing their jobs, like if she didn't like them or something. I don't know. There were a lot of things we were worried about. But I think it was an important piece of us starting to build communication more than we had before, improving like our cooperation and things inside. Eventually, with a lot of conflict involved in a lot of that, but also making more space to start processing some trauma. that we couldn't, we couldn't process before because we couldn't maintain that level of secrecy and that level of functioning and also start processing any of that trauma. Yeah, so I guess those are 
some of our perspectives on how that whole thing went down. It was a lot. It was very stressful. I'm really glad that we had Primal Pack helping us with a lot of it. We were also dealing with a gatekeeper who was a persecutor at the time, and like a bunch of other stuff was going on too, as well as like becoming physically disabled was happening at the same time. So it was a lot of change. All right. We are trying to get back on top of our upload and streaming schedule. So the goal is still the same. We haven't gotten totally back on top of it yet, but we're hoping to over time, essentially. And we are trying to do Q&A live streams if we miss an upload day. So, for instance, if we miss a Monday upload, we try to do a stream on Tuesday. Or maybe, like, Monday night, if that's when we have the energy for it. But upload days are also on therapy days for us, so we try not to plan to do live streams on those days in case we're not up to it from doing therapy. Feel free to comment any thoughts or questions or ideas for future videos that you might want to see. We read and respond in some way to all of our comments, but you can also do those things over on Discord. Uh, remember to check out our Patreon for information about what perks you can get on various tiers, and thank you as always to all of our patrons we currently have. It seriously makes a huge difference, and we really like doing those perks and stuff over there. And... Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to turn notifications on so you don't miss when we do manage to upload, including when we upload uh, gaming streams after the fact, after doing them on Twitch. We are hoping to start a new uh, Sims-related series if we reach certain goals over on Twitch, so make sure to go over there and check that out if you are interested. And... Thank you for watching, and for all of your support in various ways and places, like Patreon and Twitch and Etsy and all those things, all of which we link in the description of all of our videos, as well as like Discord and our wish list and all that stuff. Yeah, I think that's it. So, thanks again for watching. Bye!